<laughs> Hello everybody, it is XLRX here today with a brand new video. Today we are going to be talking about postmodernism in film and uh, Blade Runner. All those moments will be lost in time like <clears throat> tears in rain time to die now before we go in depth and analyze Blade Runner let's talk about postmodernism in film and its definitions what the fuck is that man? now by definition, postmodernist film is a classification for works that articulate the themes and ideas of uh, postmodernism through the medium of cinema. Some of the goals of postmodernist film are to subvert the mainstream conventions of narrative structure and characterizations and uh, to test the audience's suspension of disbelief. Now, the highlight there is postmodernism and suspension of disbelief, so let's go down the rabbit hole. Uh, postmodernism is an intellectual stance or mode of discourse characterized by skepticism towards the grand narratives of modernism, uh, opposition to uh, epistemic certainty or stability of meaning and uh, emphasis on ideology as a means of maintaining uh, political power. Uh, initially um, emerging from a mode of uh, literary criticism, postmodernism developed in the mid-20th century as a rejection of modernism. Now, modernism um, is a both political and uh, arts movement that uh, arose from the broad transformation in Western society during the late 19th and early 20th century. The movement in itself um, uh, reflected a desire that uh, for a creation of a new forms of art, philosophy and social organization which reflected the newly emerging industrial world including features as uh, urbanization, architecture, new technology, and war. Now, let's get back to suspension of disbelief, with I mentioned earlier. Uh, suspension of disbelief is sometimes uh, uh, called willing suspension of disbelief, is the avoidance of critical thinking or logic in uh, examining something unreal or impossible in the reality such as a work of speculative fiction in order to believe it for the sake of enjoyment. Now, Aristotle first, um, in a way, explored this idea or this concept, the suspension of disbelief, in relation to the principles of theater back in the day, where uh, the audience ignores the unreality of fiction in order to experience uh, catharsis. Now, catharsis has uh, as a meaning, uh, it has two by definitions. Uh, the first one being a, uh, a purifying or figurative cleansing of the emotions, especially pity and fear. And the second one being a release of emotional tension as after an overwhelming experience that restores or refreshes the spirit. You working on another book? Yes, I am. It must really be something, making stuff up all the time. Yeah, it teaches you to lie. How's that? You make stuff up, it has to be believable. It's called suspension of disbelief. I like that. Suspension of disbelief. Now let's go back to uh, postmodernist films. Uh, those films uh, make contradiction of all sorts, whether it's... Uh, uh, the, uh, the visual aspects of it, the, the technical uh, aspect of it, uh, characters, morals, uh, 
story uh, structure and uh, other things as well. So those contradictions uh, are all crucial to uh, postmodernism or postmodernist films. Some examples might be Blade Runner, uh, The Alien, Terminator, Eight and a Half, uh, Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, La La Land, uh, Akira, The Matrix, Batman, Taxi Driver, Star Wars, uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Escape from New York, Forrest Gump, Big Lebowski, Shutter Island, La La Land, uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, and etc. 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 But now let's go back to Blade Runner. Blade Runner is the best example, in a sense, for postmodern film uh, in a way that is both represent the conditions of postmodernity and employs element of the postmodern condition to texture its narrative uh, in its form, uh, content and philosophical ideology. Blade Runner uh, explores the themes of life, life extension, um, recycling, hyperreality, and identity crisis. In Blade Runner, there's an overaching or, and, uh, or uh, slow burn uh, postmodern identity crisis that seems a bit uh, to fetch everyone and everything uh, in the film. Uh, the film is set in Los Angeles, 2019, where the, the world is in this ongoing, uh, never-ending crisis, per se. Uh, and in the film, uh, science, technology uh, and progress overall is all questioned and uh, in some way uh, to have failed the society. The world is polluted by industry and overcrowding or overpopulation and only the rich and wealthy escape to the off-worlds. And, uh, well, uh, one of the main or key themes of the film is the blurring uh, of the differences between the real and the artificial, in this case between the humans uh, and androids called uh, replicants in the film. And so, increasingly, it is no longer possible to be clear about uh, what it means to be human. The questions that the film poses are to do with the meaning of humanity in the postmodern age, uh, when uh, the distinction between the human and the machine um, is unclear. Whether emotion can be programmed or if humanity can be manufactured, uh, those are the same questions asked by many postmodern philosophers about the hyperreal. The Los Angeles of Blade Runner have been uh, discussed as a version of uh, postmodern uh, city, like huge advertising images uh, promoting this off world uh, and the colonies leaving the world for a better life, in a sense, where everyone can live the real uh, world for a more attractive, uh, virtual uh, equivalent. For a more attractive, uh, virtual world or life. That make more sense, a more virtual life. Another aspect or another way of seeing the film is uh, that the film is about time and our lack of it. One of the replicants is a young man, uh, but uh, his body is aging and dying really fast. Uh, and we also, throughout the film, we are we we will never we never know or figure out if even that if uh, even the main character played by Harrison Ford is in fact human or not, you know, the film ends with an enigma. And um, 
the antagonist of the story, as I was saying, um, he, in the final scene of the film, he delivers the line where he say, where he says, "All these moments will be lost in time, like tears in the rain." And uh, and as in most uh, postmodernist films, we are focused or forced to confront the way in which the world. Uh, is constructed through a set of binary oppositions such as truth and lies or uh, reality or fiction or uh, good and bad uh, human and machine uh, life and death and so on texturally uh, blade runner quotes from uh, different film genres uh, film movements waves or uh, periods as well from other visual media like an actual historical period. Uh, in terms of film's visual uh, narrative or aesthetics or structure, Blade Runner is a science fiction neo-noir film, genre-blending film, right? It takes a lot from the dystopian futuristic films, for example, Metropolis, or from the noir films of the 50s. Uh, furthermore, uh, Blade Runner, uh, popularized or reinvented the, the cyberpunk genre of film. Uh, whereas to that point in cinema, cyberpunk was only a uh, subgenre of science fiction uh, known only in the uh, books, novels and in comic books. But during the 80s, this subgenre started to be included in the uh, film medium as well. And uh, Ridley Scott 1982 film uh, Blade Runner is one of the first, if not the first film to popularize this genre in the film medium. Obviously within uh, uh, time the genre took off with other films as well, such as uh, Akira in 1988, Robocop in 1987, Tetsuo the Iron Man in 1989, Johnny Memnonic in 1995, Ghost in the Shell in 1995 as well. New Rose Hotel in 1998 and the Matrix Trilogy in 1999, uh, 2002 and 2003. So yeah, this is pretty much it about Blade Runner and uh, postmodernism. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.